Hello, hello, now we're looking at the black cards of Ikoria. Uh, sure. So now the black cards, I think, are more centered around the humans on this plane and how they do not like animals. <laughs> animals come and kill us. Why would we want to be their friends and hang out with them like you hippies out there in the woods? We are going to build a big city and say no animals allowed. Look at all these people killed by animals. Nice. Uh, I kind of like these enchantments that just create a weak token. Stuff like Legion's Landing, I think, is an interesting kind of gameplay dynamic. So like, you get rid of the creature, but then the real effect kind of lingers. Blitz Leech. Oh, remove all counters from that creature. That's always a very exciting effect. Um, it's, it's more exciting on Vampire Hexmage, A, because it's way cheaper, and B, because you can kill Planeswalkers and activate Dark Depths and stuff with it. Just removing stuff from a creature and a creature and opponent controls, I feel like the combo potential here is pretty limited. This still seems like a very strong card, though, given that there's all sorts of mechanic counters, there's all sorts of plus one, plus one counter granting things. It can really, really weaken something. Sure... This is very ominous, <laughs> ominous flavor text. Sure, it's kind of cool. Uh, boot Nipper. All right. I like these that enter with a choice of two counters. I think that's really fun gameplay. The number of hyper-specific phobias and somehow this kind of all of them. <laughs> like hyper-specific phobias. Again, it's kind of getting into this like almost meme language that I'm like... Meh. But when it's, I don't know, it still feels like it's in the kind of academic sense of the game normally. So that's okay. And then it's balanced by ones that, like, there's no real joke here. It's just kind of flavor. It's it's just showing what this character is like. So as long as there's still a balance of those, again, like, I, I think of Hearthstone. It's just every single card is some stupid meme. Um, it's fine. This seems not bad. The fact that you can draw a card maybe good and limited and some token spammy deck. Do I have to farm? I do. One second. Plant all. Harvest all. Group all. Plant all. Good, good. Call of the Death Dweller. We saw this before. We saw this before, I think. Yeah. Sure. Seems all right. This seems quite strong too. The alt art has an outrageously high price, despite it being an uncommon. I wonder why. I mean, it looks cool, but it doesn't look like twenty four ninety nine cool. I don't know. Oh, it's only the foil is listed. I see. So maybe if there was a non foil, I guess there's just not much listed because this set just came out a bit ago. Corpse churn. Hmm, this seems all right. I have no idea what's going on to this flavor art, though. Like, the flavor text explains it. I guess it's like we're rummaging through a bunch of corpses, and then we found this this buddy. Oh, okay. Huh. Uh, this seems okay-ish. Oh, I love that art. Wow, I love that art. So evocative. Hmm. Oh, there's Kelson the Plague again. Is this Kelson the Plague? Looks like somebody who could be called the Plague. People pay to be part of the fantasy. Very interesting. Ooh, Deadweight is back. This was a big play card way back in uh, in Estrad. In Limited and stuff, this just did so much work. In this set, it's much more about like big creatures than creatures that are annoying to deal with. Um, so I don't know if it's going to be, like, as important. But even then, just paying one mana to save yourself two or more life. Uh, or, or likely a lot more life over the course of the game. It's not bad. Oops, I gotta go back to the other screen so I can tell when I need to loot. Okay. Dirge Bat. Damn. Maybe we saw this before? Damn. Uh, yeah, this thing seems... Mm. See, the thing is, I keep reading this as, like, an ETB effect, 
Then I'm like, wow, four mana destroy creature planeswalker. This is like Chupa, Chupacabra. Ravenous Chupa, Chupacabra times two. But it's not really. You like need another creature. You need to pay six. It does give that creature flying too. I, I don't know. It seems okay. Durable Quail Bug. Hmm. Sure. Roll out and get on with their lives. Fun. Duskfang, Mentor. Ah, oh, so this is a cycle of uh, pumping up a mechanical tribe and then uh, doling out those mechanics. Sure. Interesting that black gets like Link. I mean, I know it's secondary in black, but uh, I, I associate it much more with white. Ooh. Pretty interesting. Is this, like, too narrow? Hmm. I mean, Fatal Push is good. Hmm. It's more expensive. Yeah, I don't think this is that good. This is not Fatal Push. The Revolt ability on Fatal Push cannot be uh, underestimated either. Fatal Push really coming on either Revolt? I guess so. What? What? I thought this card was way older for some reason. I mean, I guess Aether Revolt is three years old now, but I thought it was even older than that. Extinction Event. We saw this before. That's handy. Thank you, Scryfall. Gloom Pangolin. I think we saw this before. We saw this before. I think it's really cool. Uh, ooh, destroy target creature with no counters on it, or remove up to three counters from target creature. Hmm, remove up to three counters seems like pretty meh. <laughs> like, why not just remove all counters, you know? Would that really have made it broken? But, uh, still, this is a pretty good kill spell. Like, this is more general than, like, Doomblade or Go for the Throat. I would imagine, I guess it depends on the set. But in like eternal formats, I think this would be the strongest. So this is another story spotlight card where one of the humans decides to kill this flying kitty. Uh, and apparently this is a heartless act. So I still don't know what's going on in the plot, but we're slowly piecing it together. Hunted Nightmare, when an ETBs, target opponent puts a death touch counter on a creature they control. That's pretty cool. This This is like kind of a reference to Another cycle of cards of the Hunted stuff, like Haunted Horror, they're like really under-costed. But your opponent got stuff too. Um, hunted Wumpus <laughs> is like the really extreme one that can be a super blowed in either direction. Yeah, cool, uh, cool mechanic. This is pretty similar. Except that instead of getting a creature, so if you play this against an empty board, it's like pretty friggin' sweet. And the fact that it is Menace is kind of interesting too. So if, even if they only have one creature, you can still get in with it. Even if that creature now has Death Touch. Neat card. Very neat card. Cool gameplay. Okay. Oh, terrifying. Even more terrifying. Uh, did we see this before? I feel like I would have remembered this art, but maybe my mind just blocked it out. Sure. Story target teacher that was dealt damage this turn. That's kind of cool. I like stuff like that. You like ping it, and this thing comes in and kills it. I like it. Uh, sure, this is, I guess, what this card costs these days. It's kind of awkward, too, because, like, you almost never want to cycle. Like, like this card is always going to be good. Like, it should always be good. How do I put this? If you're in a situation where you draw this card, your opponent has n cards in hand. You're basically like either like there's always going to be a point at which taking a card from your opponent is much better than drawing a card yourself. If you're going to win the game, you'll like hit that point inevitably because oh, I don't know. It's like hard to articulate what I'm trying to say here, and I'm not even sure if it's true, so maybe I would get to a point where I finally clearly say what I mean, and then I'm like, wait, that makes no sense. But do you kind of get what I'm getting at? It just seems so weird to cycle this card. Like, when is discarding... When is that not useful? I don't know. Anyways, it's cool that it exiles. It's cool that you can also hit the graveyard. 
the cost is outrageous, but cycling one is sweet. Ooh, and some haunting flavor text. Really nice. Hmm. Spell is flash as long as you control a permanent with flash. That already is really weird. That is something we've never seen before. Kind of flash tribal. Crazy. I kind of like it, though. Because stuff like flash and haste, they only matter the turn the card comes into play, and then after that it might as well not be printed on the card. Which is... Fine, I don't think it's like they need to stray away from mechanics like that. But it's cool that it it is still on the card. It is yet another thing that things can point to and and another point of specialness that you can like activate. Um so I like to see more of that. Like the thing with ginger boot where it can only be blocked by creatures with haste, I think is really cool. It's kind of similar. Anyways, there's no cost to cast a spell, sack a creature, destroy a creature. This could be okay. Could actually be good under really good under ideal circumstances, but probably too unreliable. It doesn't like bring you back that hard if you've already got creatures to sack. We saw this before. I think the wording of it is like so elegant. Night Squad Commando. Sure, I think we've seen this before, maybe. Another instance of this human creature. Sure. Spooky. Sure. Unbreakable bonds. So there are some humans in black that are buds with animals, I guess. But I guess it's not so much creatures we're seeing depicted here, but uh, getting stuff back from the graveyard. Sure. I think we saw this card before. I just have more context now of what each color is doing. Story-wise and stuff. <laughs> sure. There's a nice little story here. I already like it here. So yeah, Vivian is here for some reason. We don't really know why. Maybe she just thought it would be cool. She's just on she's just touristing on vacation. Sure. Cute. Saw this before. It's another Godzilla variant. This card seems kind of nuts. Not like nuts strong, but just big. <laughs> Whisper Squad. I like that name. Woo, and it does this. I like this effect. Um, and it puts it onto the battlefield tapped. Interesting, interesting. I, I can see this being good and limited with uh, you just like pick up as many of these as possible. You. Uh, actually get like a ton of stuff. You get stuff like that mutual sacrifice card. Um, yeah, I don't know. It seems like there's potential. Just this is such a unique effect. You're you're essentially shrinking your deck as well if you run a bunch of these and they all just pull each other out. It like enables more draws and stuff. Yeah, it seems good. And lastly, presumably we have this snake that we saw before. All right, we will get into red next. Please look forward to it. Hopefully it will be out tomorrow. See you then. Bye-bye.